So thank you everyone for joining me today. It's wonderful to see you all. I always look forward to Wednesdays. I hope you all do as well. Uh, my name is Michael Smith. I'm the National Consumer Education Manager of Genomi Canada. And yes, I'm back actually from the Genomi Sewing and Learning Center for another edition of Genomi's Magical Machine Mystery Tour. Now, what will it be? Well, let me ooh, spin, keep you all in suspense even longer. Hmm. There's some spaces here on my <laughs> bookshelf here. What can it be? From Germany. Oh my gosh, how fabulous. This is what I love about technology. Of course, we'd love everyone to be at the Sewing and Learning Center here in Oakville, Ontario. But if you can't join us for whatever reason, how wonderful that you can join us via technology all the way from Germany. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for your support. So here we go for Janome's Magical Machine Mystery Tour. Our fabulous machine is, ooh, ta-da. Everybody loves a little splash of color. Oh, perfect timing. Linda's here and Gordon Madlin. Perfect. Everyone loves a splash of color in their sewing room. So how about the 1522BL? So this is the beautiful blue. Or, you know, something that the machine comes with, this beautiful dust cover that has a pocket in the front to store your goodies, like the, oh, included instruction manual that will tell you how to use your machine. You could pop that in here, put the dust cover on, then you know where everything is. There's a little slot here for the handle so you can transport your machine this way very safely. There is, ooh, there we go, nice semi-hard cover. But if you, blue isn't your color, ooh, ta-da, how about 1522 in dark gray? So this is 1522DG for dark gray. Isn't that gorgeous? Or again, 1522 a BL is in blue. Or look at that. I have been saying for years, Janome should do more machines in red. Look at that gorgeous machine, all in beautiful red. So this is 1522RD for red. Uh, they mm, don't quite match my shoes, but my shoes are red too. <laughs> so, yes, you see, red is my color. So I love this machine. So if you were uh, joining our Magical Machine Mystery Tour, ooh, quite a long time ago, it seems several months ago, definitely last year, uh, I showed the 1522 PG, which is pink gold. And it's a beautiful pink gold color, which was Janome's anniversary color for celebrating their 100th anniversary. So it was October 16th, technically, of 1921, when Janome, as we know it, uh, incorporated. So we're still in the year of celebrating. Uh, until, you know, October of 2022. So we're still in our 100th uh, anniversary. So maybe you can still find uh, some of those 15... Uh, oh, perfect. And someone just made a delivery in my room, which is exactly what I needed. <laughs> uh, somebody... Um, yes, maybe at your Janome dealer, you may be able to find... Oh, I had to take a picture... There's what the 1522 PG machine looks like. Uh, yes, I had one here in my classroom, but I had to surrender it uh, because once these PG, Special Anniversary Edition machines, were were gone, they were gone. You know, Janome's only going to be 100 for ultimately a couple of more months. So once these machines are gone, they're gone. But because this was already such a popular machine, woo, now we have that same beautiful 1522 machine in these fabulous uh, three colors. So you can go on genome.ca and print out the features uh, sheet here that will tell you a little write-up about the machine itself, some of the features in each of the colors. They can go on genome.ca. And again, here's one for the blue machine feature sheet. And here's one for the dark gray. So you can go on genome.ca and just type in 1522 and up comes all 
these machines and then you click on whichever color you're interested in so then you can see more about the machine and then contact your Genomic Canada dealer. Again, those 1522 PG machines may still be around at some of the dealers. Uh, so if you would really like one of those anniversary models, great, now is definitely your time to pick it up. But again, once those machines are gone, they're gone. But now we've got them in one of these three colors. So it's a very cool machine, uh, 22 stitches, if you can imagine. And in fact, they all come on this cute little stitch chart. Isn't that adorable? So it even tells you that uh, with your regular zigzag foot, then these are all the stitches you're going to be able to do. Uh, with this foot, it's actually the blind hem foot, adjustable blind hem foot. And these are the stitches you could do with that foot. And then this is your statin stitch foot. And these are the stitches recommended for that foot. Your automatic buttonhole foot here. So you've got lots uh, included with this machine, uh, even a threading guide and how to thread the bobbin, like everything is included just in this cute little stitch chart. Now, one thing I love, there's so many great features of this machine. Look at this big giant bed of the machine. You've got all of this space here to create, but oh, look at this, a little trap door. Isn't that cool? Now we can remove the accessory tray here all that beautiful storage so that means it is a free arm so that's great a lot of people like that when they're hemming or you know sewing on a collar uh so even this stitch chart you know Janome is so well organized so here's my little stitch chart and it can just tuck right there in your accessory tray isn't that cool now you can see here this is a perfect spot for your bobbins and the included are four Janome bobbins. Now, of course, you can get more from your Janome dealer and pretty much all Janome domestic machines will take the same bobbin. There are some exceptions like the HD9 or the 1600P, for example, they take a specific bobbin, but most Janome regular sewing machines will all take the same uh, Janome bobbin so you can get them very easily at your Janome dealer. Oh, Cheryl's here. Fabulous. Hello. But speaking of extra bobbins, ooh, how about red bobbins for your red Janome machine? You can get this pack of 25 red bobbins at your Janome dealer as well. So how cool is that? So room for our bobbins and oh yes, our big automatic buttonhole foot. Now you can go back to the A to Z with Janome episodes on uh, the IGTV icon on Janome HQ Instagram page, or it's on the Janome HQ uh, YouTube channel. This is uh, automatic buttonhole foot R that comes with a bunch of machines, uh, but it was the A to Z with Janome series. It was the B episode for buttons and button, uh, buttonholes. <laughs> so that'll tuck in our accessory tray there. And of course, things like, oh yes, we all need a seam ripper when we're sewing, unfortunately. <laughs> so that can tuck in there. An extra pack of needles. Now you'll see there it says, organ needles and specifically the HA. Now that's a big German word that basically means a flat back. <laughs> a regular domestic uh, household sewing needle is that HA times one. Uh, in this case, it's size 14 and there's three of them. So this is a little package of organ needles that come with some of our machines. Again, they could maybe tuck up, ooh, tuck up there in your machine. Uh, in your little accessory case. Now, speaking of needles, that yes, you can see, oh, these Janome red tip needles, size 14, I use these the most. In fact, when I came back to the Sewing and Learning Center, I discovered, oh, the cupboard is bare. I definitely need more. I use these red tip needles for the majority of my sewing. So make sure to stock up at your Janome dealer so you always have them. So you can get Janome needles, uh, Janome branded needles here, Again, red tip size 14 is regular sewing, basically. Oh, the purple tip size 14 with that cobra head. I love using these. Anytime you may get skip stitches or if you're um, sewing through lots of layers, if you're uh, quilting, for example, I liked using the purple tip needle with that cobra head for uh, quilting. And Janome also has, oh, you're sewing really delicate fabric. This is a size nine, so it's got a very small eye, very small shaft, so you're not gonna leave a big hole in your fabric. You're definitely gonna use finer thread with this fine needle. Now, more information about Janome needles, 
of course, consult your instruction manual. There are some little tips and tricks there of what size needle to use with what fabrics. Uh, definitely go on our genomi.ca site. Uh, there is a, the Genomi needle guide that's in the accessories tab. Uh, certainly go on Genomi Life blog. There are lots of resources, lots of blogs all about Genomi needles. Uh, here are denim needles, for example, size 16. So they have a bigger eye, a bigger shaft to go through all those thick layers. Now again, your Genomi dealer, if they don't have all these needles in stock, they can certainly order them for you. They are in stock in our Genomi Canada warehouse here. But if you can't find Genomi needles, organ needles, as you saw by that little pack included with our machine, uh, organ actually makes Genomi branded needles. So they're kind of like one and the same. So if you can't find Genomi branded needles, you're perfectly fine with organ needles as well. And these particularly are like super stretch, were great for knits. There's a needle for every type of fabric, for every type of thread. So definitely you can find more resources on genomi.ca and Genomi Life blog. I also did a uh, a to Z with Genomi presentation uh, was the J episode about Genomi bobbins and needles. Now also included in your 1522 uh, machines, regardless of color, uh, we've got this is the cute little satin stitch foot. Now it kind of looks like your regular zigzag foot that's on the machine, but this one is actually a little smaller, a little shorter, and it has a groove in the back side. So this is the satin stitch foot. So all those decorative stitches and satin stitches can easily pass under this foot with that groove. Now in most other machines, this foot is actually plastic, but here with your 1522, it is metal. So this can definitely go in our accessory tray. Uh, we've got the E foot, the zipper foot that is included in so many of our machines. And again, go back to that A to Z with Genomi series. Uh, the E episode was uh, the zipper foot. Uh, since it is uh, foot number E, regardless of what machine you have. Uh, now this is your adjustable blind hem foot. Now in most other machines, the blind hem foot is the G foot. In this case, this is the L foot here for the 1522. Uh, oh, and Terry's here, hello. Uh, so we can adjust it to make our perfect blind hem. Now this also kind of looks like the edge guide foot. So we could use a double duty for this foot here. So I will keep that aside. And then this is the button sewing foot. So when we want to sew a button on by hand or by machine and not by hand, save a lot of time. It's got this little rubbery grip here to grip the button in place. It snaps on, but then it's also got this little, uh, edge to it. Uh, so then when your button is in place, like it keeps your foot level, it's really cool. So I'll just show that very quickly as usual. Oh, time is already racing by. So the 1522 machines, it is mechanical. So it has all these uh, knobs that you will turn for your stitch selection, your length, your width, your reverse button. This is your uh, needle tension here to adjust. All of your stitches, again, are included in that cool little stitch chart, but here they are up at the top of the machine as well. So you can easily see at a glance how to adjust your machine. It is a front-loading oscillating hook. Uh, the drop-down bobbin, the lay-in kind, are the rotary hook. This one is an oscillating hook. I always say, um, think of an oscillating fan, you know, standing upright in your room, and then that fan, you know, again, is vertical. So this is an oscillating hook. And we have a separate bobbin case. So then we open the little trap door, and then the, our bobbin then pops out. And then we have the separate bobbin case here. Ooh, there we go. <laughs> so there. I just needed a sec to pop that out. So in this case, most of the time with our uh, Genomi machines, if we have a rotary hook lay-in, we want to form the letter P. So our thread actually comes off the bobbin to the left. But with our front load oscillating hooks, we want to reverse that. So the thread is coming off clockwise to the right. Now this is the same for our uh, Quiltmaker Pro uh, long arm quilting machines, the same for the HD9 because they've got a separate metal bobbin case. There Again, the thread is coming off to the right and we want to make sure to get it in those 
tension discs very or in those thread guides that will put the appropriate amount of tension on the bobbin thread. Now very important when we insert this in, and again full instructions in the manual, there is a little groove at the top here in your hook race and we're going to snap that in and you definitely hear that snap. Once you know it's there, uh, once you hear that snap you're good to go. Now I'm going to rotate the balance wheel always towards you to cycle the needle up and down to bring up my bobbin thread and normally I sew at home I have a stiletto but even here my mini duckling scissors you know how I love these you can also get these from your Janome dealer they make it great for bringing up that bobbin thread and as Celine always demonstrates as well in her lives on the Janome Sewing Machines Facebook page, and they're also loaded to the Janome HQ YouTube channel under the Facebook Live playlist. On almost every Janome machine, we have a side thread cutter. Now from back to front, it's a cutter, but from front to back, it's a holder. So when we're gonna start sewing, we can hold our thread up there, so that way we're not going to have any nesting underneath there's going to be no trouble then it easily uh will just hold there while it's um until we're ready to sew Ooh, also before i move we have a uh disc uh side here that this adjusts the presser foot pressure so right now it's at three but then i could lighten it down to a one if i had a really thick fabric and i needed it to move a little more easily we can just turn this dial down to one or two or three is where it's uh, set so that's presser foot pressure so again lots of versatility with this machine different type of sewing so yes, again, we've got the free arm. And oh, when we talk about uh, button sewing, for example, the guide is at the back here. So then that keeps the foot nice and level. So then when we're ready to zigzag this foot on, uh, this button on, then again, that foot keeps the uh, button nice and level and we can do our quick little zigzag there. And then yes, we wanna drop our feed dogs. Now when we click it back into place and you notice, oh no, there's nothing is happening, but we need to cycle the balance wheel and then uh, the feed dogs will come up. They're not going to come up right on their own right away. You have to again cycle the balance wheel and once you start sewing, they will come up. There. Hello everyone. So yes, let me quickly get in and put this back into place because it's so easy to adjust this machine. So if I wanted to do, oh yes, like a regular overcasting, for example, of my seams here, uh, then we can easily just do look in our manual and it will tell us that, oh, we want to uh, adjust. We can look at the top of our machine or look at that little stitch chart. Uh, we turn our stitch selector dial to C in this case is a zigzag and then the length we can choose whatever we wish really. Uh, then about two, two and a half is kind of standard and then width uh, they recommend in the manual a number five so that will be a nice wide zigzag. This is a five millimeter wide machine as opposed to seven or a nine so when we do some sewing here now when we do the zigzag we could go right off the fabric or i like to go almost i don't go quite off the edge of the fabric but i like to instead just bring it over and almost go off the edge so i'll do it both ways so you can see the difference Generally, I like to do it almost off the edge and then I come back and you could even trim it a little closer if you wanted. So here, then I've done it both ways. So here the zigzag is almost off the fabric. Here it is totally off the fabric. So it looks a little shorter. It's a little bit more narrow. Uh, or here, when you're close to the edge of the fabric, then you could go back, and especially with your mini duckling scissors, they work so well, you could go back and trim any little wispies close to your stitching. You don't want to uh, 
you know, trim into your stitching, but you want to go close to your stitching. So you could do it either way if you choose. If you go off the edge of the fabric, again, that, that narrows your zigzag. So actually, I like to just back it off a little bit from the edge, and that way you still have that nice big zigzag. And then again, if you've got any little wispies that bother you, you can just trim those off there. But that's an easy way to overcast your seams. Uh, if you don't have a serger, if you don't want to get out your serger, you just simply turn the dial. Uh, again, A is a straight stitch. You just turn it over to C and boom, uh, away you go. Uh, now, if you wanted to do, oh, let's say you wanted to sew with knit fabrics. Again, I, I haven't changed my foot. I haven't really changed anything. All I'm doing is now I'm going to select G for my knit stitch. But we can see here on our stitch chart, I've got two different G's. I've got G up here, which would be a, um, oh, uh, not quite a blind hem. It's, um, oh, what's, oh, geez, what's the name of that stitch? It's on the tip of my tongue. So many stitches to keep in my, <laughs> in my head. Uh, but it's not this G. We want that G. That's our knit stitch. So in order to get this, we need to, it says SS. So we need to turn our stitch length dial ooh, to SS. There we go. So there, SS. So now we can use the other set of G stitches. I'm still going to leave my regular zigzag foot on and I'm still leaving my stitch length at five. And now, ooh, actually I do have a little sample there is that knit stitch so it provides look at that stretch it is not gonna pop and again it still looks it looks beautiful so again yes you can sew knits even on a, a you know basic entry-level machine like this uh, no problem at all uh, now, depending on your knit, you may change your needle. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> you may change your needle to a stretch needle uh, depending on your knit. So again, that you just experiment. Uh, on our needle plate here, I've got my fabric lined up at 5 8 of an inch. And away I go. It's so simple. So yes, even on a you know basic entry level machine, uh, again I don't I don't call this machine basic at all. Um, you know some people may. Uh, it's certainly not all big and fancy like our new top of the line Continental M17, but it definitely packs a big punch. You can definitely do a lot with this machine. And then ooh there, look at that knit stitch. And again, perfect. You've got that stretch. Isn't that amazing? So yes, you can sew knits on this machine as well. Wovens, like no problem. You can sew pretty much anything on it. Uh, yes, as I said, this blind hem foot. Now I've demonstrated the blind hem on previous uh, uh, A to Z with Janome. It was the uh, G episode because again, for other machines, the blind hem foot is the uh, G foot. But here on our 1522, it is the uh, it's the L foot. Now, in order to do the blind hem, there we go. Now, again, we fold up our hem. Now, this is where again we could do that over edge. And in fact, yes, let me use this sample. I can do that over edge to begin with if we wanted to, and then fold up for our blind hem. Again, full instructions in the manual. So then we will fold it back here. And then we're going to be, it would be the F, stitch F, or it is E. So I'll do F. Now I learned as well, when we're adjusting these uh, cogs here, that we have to make sure that, yes, we're really fully engaged. We don't want to be somewhere in between, you know, then, then the machine's not going to be set up properly. So when we're adjusting these knobs, we want to make sure click it's all the way over it is on f so i got that and then i'm just going to do a regular knot that uh, ss uh, i'll do a three length and then five so this adjustable guide we want this little guide being right up against this fold so however we move that is going to be dependent on and i have a width of five 
So uh, depending on where this guide is will indicate how deep the needle penetrates the fold of that fabric. So I definitely need to, in this case, refold my fabric and I have to move that guide over and do some more adjusting. There we go. I needed to adjust my fabric a little more. So this is why samples and oops and Celine says that all the time. We want to make sure to keep our fold next to that guide. Uh, and Celine says the same thing. Sample, sample, samples. We have to do samples. So yes, let me do this. And again, you won't be sewing at the side. So here is my blind hem stitch and then you'll see that zigzag this is what you're determining that little zigzag that little bite into your fabric now if it is too much then yes look at that that was too big of a bite my fabric wasn't quite aligned properly but i thought that's a cool to me that's a cool decorative edge like imagine if you're hemming maybe you want to show that I think that looks quite cool actually or along a pocket edge if you want to show that and we've got so many beautiful threads i'm using the ooh madeira polyneon in red how perfect <laughs> so if this is the look you want absolutely that's totally fine that means that your needle is going to take more of a bite out of the fabric but if you want it to be oh look at this simple there this is ideally when you're doing a blind hem and again you would use matching thread uh, so then if this were in white, you would never see it. So again, look at that's what ideally that you want. But again, if you want it to look like that as a decorative thing, so you've got some options. So that's totally cool. So this is your traditional blind hem. But you know, this foot would also be cool if we go back to a regular straight stitch. And then if I wanted to do, oh, some edge stitching, let's say then we could adjust this guide either closer to the needle or we could adjust it further away so this could become a guide if i want to there if i want to just do a regular straight stitch and let's say then i wanted to use this like for uh top stitching or for edge stitching so then now I could follow, this is my previous line of stitching, I could use this as a guide to do really close. And again, it, you decide where you, whoops, you decide where you want this guide to be. So if I moved my guide over here, And then you just follow this guide down so it becomes almost like our edge guide foot so it's really cool of what you can do boom and there you go two perfectly parallel lines of stitching and then again you can go quite a bit further or you can go quite a bit closer so you've got some options there so lots of versatility when it comes with your 1522 and again you've got all these beautiful colors in red or in blue or in dark gray and even the box doesn't that look beautiful and they already have a lot of the information oh there we go all the information that you need isn't that cool or again make sure that you jump on the genomi.ca website to find out more information and to see all of these presser feet uh, demo to go back to Genomi HQ, uh, specifically the A to Z with Genomi series uh, when I demoed so many of them. Uh, so let me flip around. Hello. Yes. Talk about a whirlwind. Oh my word. Yes. The time just goes by so fast and there's always so much to do, but I certainly look forward to seeing you all next week and we'll do another Ask Genomi HQ. So definitely um, log into Genomi uh, HQ Instagram and Facebook and Genomi Canada Instagram and Facebook and leave us your questions there. Anything you, that you would like to ask me uh, on air, I'll certainly try to ask, uh, answer them online if I can at the time. And then, um, yes, hopefully we'll be seeing you, oh, tomorrow as well as a heads up at 3 p.m. Eastern on the Genomi Canada Facebook page. I'll be doing the first 
uh, monthly, first of the monthly series, I'll be doing a uh, live with Liz Johnson from So For Home. We did a kind of test live last month when I showed her the fabulous and showed all everyone that joined uh, the fabulous Janome Continental M17 machine. And then tomorrow, Liz Johnson uh, from So For Home is going to show us some cool zipper techniques. Uh, specifically for the little uh, waste pouch that they created as one of our uh, Genomi Canada exclusive projects that is on the Genomi Canada uh, Inspire tab. So you can go there for more information. I also wrote about it in uh, Genomi Life blog and Liz made a post about it. And then, uh, yes, we'll be on the Genomi Canada Facebook page live at 3 p.m. Eastern tomorrow talking about the sofa home uh, waste pouch and specifically zipper applications. So if you've always been afraid of zippers, definitely join us uh, tomorrow for that. And then hopefully, yes, I will see you all live uh, next week for an Ask Genomi HQ. Thank you everyone for joining me. It's wonderful to see you all. Have a wonderful day. Bye. <laughs>